Hey everybody, B.W. Cummins here with a not another drawing for you. Tonight I thought we'd go through this um, toned gray uh, sketchbook that I finished recently. Let's just get right into it. Basically going to tell you what I was thinking that night or just a little bit about the drawing or whatever, what I learned from it, failures and whatnot. And know that you can watch uh, any of these drawings on previous posts. Uh, you can watch them happen in time lapse, usually around two to three minutes. The first couple of pages of this book are from uh, Inktober, so this one goes back that far. It's a 50 page sketchbook. And so um, I did a um, Inktober wrap up, a slight summary, so you can go and see those 29, 30, and 31. You can watch the video or you can watch that wrap up. There's 31 with slice. So um, starting off right away, we go into um, November and they'd already been talking about Christmas for a couple of weeks. You're starting to see Christmas decorations like even in uh, September. So I was like, uh, the pumpkin's barely done and Santa's sneaking up, creepy Santa's sneaking up behind him. After Inktober, I was, you know, pretty punch drunk. That's, that's quite a feat to draw every night. You know, after work and all that stuff, you've got your regular stuff to do. Probably for the first couple of um, days after that, I drew, you know, things that were fun and easy. And so um, I always like drawing geckos, lizards, you know, and stuff like that. So this one was actually time consuming because I went first and did white scales and then put the color on top of it so you could see them through there. You know, just fun and simple. Not a lot of, of thought or brain power went into this one. Just putting lines on the paper. And this one, same thing. I was just, you know, tired, but I still wanted to keep drawing and thought I'd draw a sad duck for no apparent reason. Maybe it came up in conversation that day. A lot of times my, my sketches are of things that got talked about that day. So this was quick and easy and I wanted to do something that was enjoyment and not work. So that's, you know, like a little 15 minute sketch. A lot of these are, they range in time from 15 minutes to an hour. Uh, but usually I would say they average 25 to 30 minutes. Um, this one to me is kind of a fail. I wanted to draw a Sasquatch, but I did a little differently and he uh, found a razor, so he's shaving. And I think that point gets across, but like especially in this region, I feel like I could have told the story better and a little more clear. It gets a little muddy in here. So I didn't tell the concept as successfully as I wanted to. Um, and there's no fail, no failure in the sense that this is pointless, so the fact that it exists is the success, but in my mind, I knew it could have been better. So I really enjoy the lowbrow style. I do draw a lot of farts and liquids, um, you know, snot and drool and stuff, so it's kind of lowbrow. And some people at work are uh, talking about babies and how cute they are and how much they love them, and well, I love babies too, and I, I said this when I drew this, not all of them are lovely some of them are kind of gross and i don't want to touch them because there's stuff coming out of everywhere so i just thought i'd draw that had a lot of fun with this one really tried to go the extra mile with you know making parts that are shiny shiny and just making this baby not something that you'd want to approach and pick up unless you've got a lot of guts so lowbrow style love it i'll do a lot of that in here this was just a concept for the character design challenge a few months back and it was backpack so I was just being had baby on my mind from the day before so I was just trying to think of this uh, Native American lady having to lug this giant baby up a hill not really overly excited about the design but I did it and I finished it so there you go I had fun doing the more fun doing the pattern on the blanket than I did any other part made a living I live in Arizona and I made a living for a long time uh, drawing Native American influenced uh, or inspired, I should say, artwork and Southwestern artwork. So it was kind of fun to go back and do that. Um, this one, a YouTuber commented on one of my drawings, which I suggest you do, um, like, always suggest things I can draw. And I don't even remember exactly what the suggestion was, maybe a happy rat or a happy mouse. And so just thought of what would, you know, what would be funny that made a rat happy and why, you know, something a little different. And this rat is happy because he's opening boots and trying them on. And uh, it was fun. I like. I always like shading with um, fur just to get directional texture with fur, but also get your shading done. This rat captured pure joy, which I like. 
And then this guy uh, didn't really have anything in mind. If there's a prominent eyeball, that's probably because I didn't have much in my head to draw. So I just start there and add to it. And I really like this one. Um, make a good tattoo or something. I don't know. I just like it's all tonal. And, but it still has some good depth. And so I enjoyed drawing it. It has good expression. And then uh, one of my favorite things I've drawn, I think I'll make this one into a sticker. I think the ink has kind of, not faded, but settled with time. It was a little more vivid. But uh, this little face snail, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, it has a lot of, you know, motion and different textures and different uh, shininess and dullness and greasiness, and I really like it. And I think it would make a good sticker. So as I start doing that more and uh, put them in an Etsy shop, I'll let y'all know, but you'll see this one for sure as a sticker that's available. Then um, a doofus Darth Vader, why not? I'm not a nerd about very many things, but I do nerd out about Star Wars. Um, I was a very young little kid, very young, when they came out, the originals came out. So it's been around almost my whole life. So yeah, that's the thing I will nerd out about more than anything. If you want, go back on my channels and look at, uh, look for the Yoda prop that I made, the life-size Yoda prop. And then I just went with that theme the next day um, and you know, another, like it was gonna be a series and I really did, I think I said it back then. I mean, I'll keep doing these. These are the only two. Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper in the Star War series. He's pointing the gun at himself. Get it? It's a joke. Okay, so I liked the that one snail drawing a lot so I was thinking what else could I do in that but I think I also got a new uh white like uh Posca is that what they are Posca pens those are a little more chalky and so when you put color on top of them they they really soak up the ink more and so it made this washed out pastel color I think you can still translate what you know what's going on here but the colors definitely aren't as uh vivid as I'd like them to be and they're they've faded even over time and gotten more pastel which yeah, is not the look I wanted um, happy Robots. I really like drawing Happy Robots. In the Inktober series, I drew a, a robot with a um, boombox torso breakdancing. And um, I don't know, I like drawing Happy Robots, but I also like showing what they're happy about. And this guy is just uh, pretty happy about his little fish. Now, you'll notice like a lot of my robots have the same kind of features because it's more about, you know, uh, expression and body position and all that. Anyway, this guy gets to carry around his little fish with him, and, uh, you know, like I say, I like drawing happy robots, so you'll see a few of them if you look back. In fact, I drew one just the other night, uh, which is like a month or a couple months after this, so. Uh, we got a little Yoda here. Um, you know, it's, I said I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm really big a Yoda fan, so uh, I've, drawn, I've drawn Yoda three or four times um, in the time that I've been on YouTube, which isn't long. It just goes back to... Uh, I think I started in late July of 2018, so we're only six or seven months in, and I've already drawn plenty of Yodas, um, but I'll keep drawing them because I like them. I didn't take much time with this. It was probably late. I was probably tired, so. All right, and as we get closer to Christmas, you'll notice I really ramp up the Christmas stuff, so we're probably into late November or December, I don't know, and I just started drawing Christmas stuff, and I was thinking, uh, is it? Ice T, is that this guy? Ice T, or who's the other one? There's Ice T, and then there's uh, Hawaiian Punch. There's a couple of guys who have the same name, but I think it's Ice T. He had just always mean and scowly, and I thought it'd be funny if he was a Santa. So I drew that real quick. That took longer to explain than it needed to. And then we went with, uh, I just wanted to do a quick uh, stylized portrait of. Ed, Edgar Allan Poe, and he did that poem, The Bells, and that part of it. I think they say bells like seven times in a row, and it's really awkward, and we'd always laugh at whoever had to read it out loud in class, but the bells, and he's holding a Christmas bell because it was Christmas time. So, but I like how this turned out. Nice little Edgar Allan Poe-y expression. Um, let's see what's next. Oh, hey, talk about low brow. We've got a unicorn farting and uh, draw a lot of unicorns and a lot of robots and a lot of Yodas. Those are the, those are my staples. There were a few unicorns before this. There'll be more to come. And this, I just wondered what a unicorn fart smelled like, so I drew it. And yeah, it's kind of probably a little embarrassed, but that's okay. Who cares? And we're back to Christmas. Um, love, 
I do draw the same thing a lot. I've drawn a couple of uh, bald cats, those uh, sphinx cats, sphinx cats. And this one's wearing an ugly Christmas sweater and uh, looks like he's allergic to it a little bit. Um, and I drew another another one in a little bit, but uh, Rudolph, like I say, lots of Christmas stuff going on. Um, got a little, got to do a little underneath texture for fur and or hair. I don't know what do you call it, fur on a deer. And then um, he's just popping his nose, which is an actual light bulb. Um, a lot of expression and movement. And hey, bonus, I even drew some motion lines, which I don't usually draw, so. It's rare for me to put those in, but I felt like I needed to on this one. So I did another Christmas, Creepy Santa. And I was thinking of that song, He Knows When You're Sleeping, He Knows When You're Awake, and just made it kind of weird and creepy. Kind of Gollum-like, uh, this Santa. And he knows things about what's over here and what's over there with his wonky eyes. And then this one was like the creepy office guy trying to get a kiss from everybody. Looks a little bit to me like Steve Buscemi. This is a style I've been drawing, I mean this gangly style, since my school days, a long time ago. Give that guy a kiss. Now then this, this next one, I don't know what I was even thinking, I'm not. Like I need to ask myself some serious questions. This was just weird. Weird talking about eggnog um, at work and I don't know. Then this happened and I have no words, I'm just. I'm concerned about myself when I draw stuff like that. But that is where eggnog comes from. I, I read it. I read about it on Google. Okay, so we're like full on into Christmas uh, in December. So this was just uh, inspired by all the uh, surly dudes that they hire to ring the bell outside of retail stores to gather your money. Some of them are just downright scary. And not all of them. Some of them are well-dressed and fun and cheery and they don't eyeball you. And But man, I've, I've passed by some people who just like, you're afraid to approach them to put money into them, and you're also afraid not to. They are just not very inviting, and they're ringing the bell like they want to kill something. The next month for the character design challenge, and it the theme was Pokemon, and I admittedly, I don't know anything about Pokemon, so I just like Googled it, and there was some character that looked like a bald cat named Mew, and that's what you were doing in this character design challenge, is reimagining this, and Again, doesn't go well with the challenge, but I did have fun drawing it. So, all the little wrinkles and stuff were fun to do. Oh, hey, I like this one. Great sticker material. Just started drawing an eye, you know, and didn't really have much else to go. You know, didn't have an idea, so that's where I usually start when I don't have an idea. And just turned it into this gross ice cream cone made of skin added the hair last minute, and I really think that amped up the gross factor. I like it. But yeah, that'll definitely be a sticker just because it's made to be one. And this was after I went and saw the uh, recut of Deadpool 2 called uh, Deadpool. What is that? Once Upon a Deadpool. That's what it was called. And that uh, if you haven't seen it, there's a great character in there. Um, now I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Um... Gosh, that bugs me when I forget things like that. Anyway, this guy. Everybody's saying it for me right now, but I just can't think of it, and I'll think of it when it's dumb. But he's just like your average, like a dad bod guy who wants to hang out with superheroes, and uh, they all jump out of a plane to do something, and it's pretty funny because there's like ACDC playing in the background, all, you know, the scene's all amped up, and he's just like gliding down. God, what was his name? Oh, it's going to bug me so bad. Yoda again. Now, this Yoda was for a reason. Uh, this was the day I kind of finished the prop I'd been building, which then I posted uh, a video of the next day after this. So this little guy is just celebrating a little, and uh, I was feeling pretty good because I'd been working on that prop for a couple of years. Like I'd, I'd owned the pieces of it for a couple of years and started putting it together and painting it, and it took me over a couple of years because I'd like put it away for months and then take it back out. Especially when I was gluing the individual hairs on that thing's head, I would spend two hours gluing hairs and then have to put it away and then I wouldn't want to go back to it. So it'd be a long time in between working on it. So it took a while, but anyway, this was Celebration Yoda because I had finished that day. Then we have just a wonky draw a bunch of stuff because I don't know what to draw and uh, it's dumb. 
and pointless and stupid, but, you know, got me drawn. Got to do all the fun little textures I like, eyeballs and tongues and teeth and all that stuff, so. And undies. Who doesn't like to draw undies? Like, more pointless than almost anything I've ever drawn. I was thinking about the uh, Frankenstein story and uh, Frankenstein's monster um, and steampunk all in the same thought process. So I started sketching this out, and then I thought, hey, let's make him giant because he's eating somebody's little arm. So just a little exercise in sketching and putting a lot of ideas together. Kind of fun to draw. I like macabre things every once in a while. Kung Fu Granny. She's got like the Kill Bill slash Bruce Lee yellow jumper on. I thought that was fun. Maybe this is what Uma Thurman will look like someday. Uh, I've heard that scientists say um, modern birds come from dinosaurs and thought, well, what would a, a dinosaur era hummingbird look like? And so I drew that and colored it, you know, in really bright colors like our ruby throated um, hummingbirds that we see here in Arizona a lot. I mean, they're not quite this rainbowy, but they are pretty brightly colored and iridescent. So I was just messing around with color on this one, had a good time. And then uh, a friend of mine here on YouTube, a comment, a suggestion, he said draw a Disney princess. So I picked the original Disney princess, but I drew in my uh, stupid wonky style. Um, and <laughs> the thing I like about this drawing, if you go back and watch it, is I took one of the songs she sings and slowed it down so much that it just, it's kind of, it almost sounds warped because she had a really fast vibrato that when you're slowing it down, it sounds really terrible and, and even the bird's wonky. So if you watch, if you go back and watch this video, listen to the song in the background, it's truly disturbing. I think I got around copyright laws though, for sure, because you almost can't identify it. So that's Snow White. I was having a conversation with one of my sons about he's getting all tatted up in his young adulthood and you know, we talk about it a lot. I trust him to make wise choices. But he loves the American traditional style, so we were talking about that. So I drew this. Um, it combines the American traditional crybaby style tattoo, but it's kind of got some of my characteristics with the beard and the weird glasses. And if you go back and watch this video, I drew four versions, or I drew three versions and then another one in Photoshop. Um, just going through the process of if he was going to get this tattoo, I made it ready for him for sure. He hasn't gotten it yet, though. I don't think he will. But boy, would that be funny if he had his dad as a baby tattooed on his chest. That'll get all the girls. I think this one would make a great sticker because it doesn't have, it's like, you know, perfect for that. This is a cat mermaid. Um, I'm sure there was some clever name I called it in the video, but I can't remember. But, you know, cats eat fish. So I figured if a cat was a mermaid, it might gnaw on its tail. Just a taste. But I had fun drawing this and I like the bright colors. And it's so big. And in the center of the page, you'll notice I miss the center of the page all the time because I just start drawing and then not knowing what I'm going to draw. It just... So this one, look at that, right in the middle of the page. So proud. Uh, this was just a quick, like, 10-minute sketch of a baby bird that fell out of the nest, but he is determined. And even though a bird can't make a fist, that bird's making a determined fist. He's going to survive. He's going to thrive. Uh, yeah, so watch this video if you want some inspiring words. Then we have uh, more directional shading, just quick, um, quick sketch doing a raccoon. The, my favorite thing about a raccoon, they're little people hands. So made sure I got those in there. And then this failure, I talk about it as a failure, but I will let you look at it and take it in and tell me what you think it is if you didn't watch my video of drawing it. And it is an overstuffed burrito, like from Chipotle or something. And this is uh, aluminum foil or tin foil, whatever you call it where you're from, foil, the foil wrap. And that was the reason I drew this, is to try to draw foil. And it proved to be very difficult, and I don't think I quite nailed it. So I may go back to that concept later. But food's like coming out of his mouth and falling, and yeah. I do like how the tortilla turned out. That looks like a real tortilla. But everything else, blech. This next one, I'll turn sideways for you, was a project for somebody who asked for a lowbrow uh, boombox chasing um, cassettes. 
and I like how it turned out on, on my on the the post of this drawing first I drew it without color and then I went back and colored it and it's a thousand times better colored than it was black and or not black and white but uh, tone on tone so um, liked how it turned out it was all right there's a lowbrow boombox ghetto blaster that's what we used to call them in the 80s this I called Mike Wazowski's cousin quick fun to draw I love the you know rainbow color blend and this guy has a nail fungus problem just something quick I like drawing every day but uh, sometimes I just want to draw for a few minutes and you'll see a difference between something like involved that I spent a long time in and something that I just drew for enjoyment in 15 minutes and then moved on. The next one, didn't know what to draw, asked for a suggestion. Someone texted back, draw a beer, personify a beer. And so I did. And um, again, it's okay. This guy's shooting a lime into his eye because it's like a Cerveza style, like a Corona style beer. But, um, you know, the, the fail for this one for me is it, it is what it is, and it's fine. But I think that uh, I wanted this bottle to look clear, and it does not look clear. And in hindsight, using blue, this much blue, uh, in the shadow part or whatever, made the lime, this lime would have popped a lot and made the drawing better balanced. By using this much blue, it took that away, and you know, whatever. Wasn't completely satisfied with this, except for, you know, you, I think people know what's happening if they look at it long enough, so that's fine. I'm a collector of antiques and vintage. I'm not a collector. I buy them and sell them on. I like to buy things cheap, like at garage sales, old things, learn about them, research them, fix them uh, sometimes, and then get them, sell them on to someone who really wants them. But some things like cool stuff like cameras and whatnot, we decorate with here, so... I just wanted to draw this old-timey camera, but in a uh, lowbrow style. And uh, I like this. Um, I think, you know, I think it could be clearer what it is. Like, if I were going to do it again, I would pay attention to making it understandable what it is. But if you look at it long enough, you figure it out. So, And we're getting to the end, by the way. Didn't set out to draw anything. Just started putting marks on paper with a, a ballpoint pen. One of my favorite things to draw with. And it turned into this head that then turned into this neck that then I put in a there and then I added these at the end to make a jack-in-the-box, like a jester in the box. And um, it's funny how you can just start drawing nothing, like I had nothing in my head and this came about a piece at a time, like not just the idea, but even like when I was drawing this, I didn't, I don't know where I started. When I was drawing one thing, I didn't know what this, what and where this was gonna be. When I was drawing this little lump here, I didn't know how it was going to work into the rest. I mean, every little piece the whole way back, I was just kind of messing around. But I had fun, and I like the way it turned out. I enjoy the steampunk look, artistically speaking. I would like to make sting steampunk props, and maybe I'll do that on this channel someday. Uh, but I thought I'd draw a little steampunk era um, diving helmet, brass and copper and all that. But... uh then I just added the octopus in it. I don't know what, what expression is in there. We can only see a little bit of it. You can fill that in in your own head. I don't care. But, yeah, it was funny that I went through and uh, counted the tentacles to make sure I had enough. And then when I went back, I still only had seven. So I thought I added one so I could have eight, and I still only had seven. So they're all intertwined and hard to count. But we'll just imagine that the eighth tentacle is in the back out of view. Then another just straight lowbrow, I wanted to draw a fly. And I wanted to kind of get that iridescent quality. And this one, I like the, all the colors and stuff. And in the movie, The Fly, the 80s one with Jeff Goldblum, he uh, he's showing someone how he's having to eat now that his teeth have rotted out. And he's turning into a fly. And he just uh, he upchucks into a little thing of donuts. So that was this puking on a donut so he can eat it. I'd wear this on a t-shirt if I wore t-shirts with things on them. And then the last page of this book is a shark. And what a what a fitting way to end this um, sketchbook because this um, this was on January 29th, which was my brother's birthday. And uh, my, unfortunately, my brother passed away a bunch of years ago. I, I'm thinking 
doing some backwards math, like 15 years ago now, as a young man, I mean, a, a young man with a new family, it was really tragic back then. And as you, when you go through something like that and you, you can't imagine how you're going to deal, but as time goes by, you, you deal, you have your sad days every once in a while, but they get fewer, you know, and further in between, but you always have those happy memories. And, and I, I'll give him some credit as, as my old, he was my older brother. And uh, only two years older, so we were pretty competitive. But he, when we were very young, he would draw very technically. Uh, he was good at, like, you know, drawing technically, like, on graph paper. And so he drew a lot of trucks, you know. And I always admired how well he could draw trucks because it was a very technical drawing. And he always drew sharks almost like a, out of a, a book about sharks, you know, uh, just a side view and he would draw di even different kinds, and I was always very impressed, but it was a very uh, mathematical process for him because creatively he couldn't draw his way out of a bag. But um, this was before I knew how much I loved art, and watching him draw those things and being so impressed with how well he did it uh, is, pro you know, it's, it's part of the inspiration of why I discovered and loved drawing, and I've made a living out of it, and it's been a part of my life. And... Quite frankly, in the last 15 years, I've gone to it to, to get me through some tough times uh, with losing family members and including him. So that, that creativity, that, that, uh, the ability to just kind of escape into something um, has been quite a blessing. But uh, so on January 29th, his would have been his 50th birthday. Uh, I drew a shark in his honor because he loved sharks, not just loved drawing those ones that he drew, but he just, he was interested in sharks. That was his thing. So I drew that for him. And uh, yeah, what a great fitting way to uh, end a sketchbook, which hardly ever happens for me because I've got 85 sketchbooks everywhere that have, like, I'll just open them in the middle and draw something. So there's like 20 blank pages. I've never been disciplined about sketchbooks, about filling them up, that is. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this little uh, tour. And um, again, please go back if you liked one of these drawings and give her a watch and uh, maybe a like and subscribe if you, if you feel like it. And hey, draw every day. This is why this channel exists, is to uh, encourage you to draw every day. Your skills get better. I can see improvement. I've been drawing my whole life. But I can see improvement from the beginning of this book to the end of this book in, in certain things. Draw every day to keep those skills sharp. Have a great day. Bye now.